All right, so today I'm going to show you how I built my Gibson L5 copy. Big fan of T-Bone Walker. Uh, used Bob Mandato's book as a baseline along with some plans. And really, uh, about six months of working on this project. Loved working on it. We'll probably build another arch top here in the future. Um, really enjoyed doing this. Just takes a long time and you know requires a bit of patience in getting this done. I'll start with some basic plans I got from Amazon.com. Created the molds, as you see. Took some uh, five-inch aluminum rods, built the bending molds. Put more rods needed than probably what you really need, but wanted to be make make sure that I've got the right uh, forms and whatnot. So did the first couple bends on pieces of wood and ended up getting a crack, as you see right here. So the wood was about 0.08 thick, and after the third time with the uh, aluminum shielding pieces I got it set. Glued in the blocks here, did the sanding to match the profile. Then I cut the kerfing, created some Corinna kerfing uh, off my slatting jig and my bandsaw. Glued up here, included some basswood uh, blocks as well for uh, stiffness on the sides. Ended up having to do another set of block, uh, another set of sides here that you can't see but I double layered my sides because it ended up being, uh, I had a problem with a crack that I tried to push this through my drum sander and you shouldn't do that. So I ended up doing the paddle sanding, which you had saw. So here I put a uh, ebony inlay on, on the back side where the butt joint was. This ended up working out really nice. A little bit of rash there from the rust. There's the paddle sander that I used. Then from there I created the top mold. Next I went to the neck and found some flame maple, cut three pieces of flame maple here and used that pin there to join them. Glued up the uh, neck nice, nice flame maple. Make sure you sand the maple on each side before you get it so there's no warping. Cut the truss rod, built the jig to do the neck angle. It's a four degree angle there uh, on that dovetail, dovetail joint so we get the right distance on the arch top. From there, I glued on the wings, then I also glued on the uh, neck extension block there. Didn't take pictures of that, don't know why. From there, my neck was pretty much done. Had to do the shape profiling. I had a Les Paul jig that I used for the, the profile here, and you see I lined it up perfectly, clamped it down, and put it to my pin router on the top and on my table rod on the bottom. That way I've got the same profile going on both sides. Used the safety planer to get the back to the same thickness. And then from there I took a three quarters bit and did a, a round over uh, that I didn't take pictures of here as well. Next is the fretboard and I've got the Stumac jig uh, and slotting tools with the slotting blade and a, a sled that I built on my table saw. From there I've got a Les Paul scale template that I used and used the uh, to put binding on here, glued the binding on, glued the edge on. Did the inlays already, which you can see how I do custom inlays on another video. Did the radius here on a radius jig that I have set up. Have another jig to do the end dots here. That's my kind of my reverse book match on the headstock. Laid it all out, glued on the headstock, the ebony headstock piece. From there I did the binding for the top piece, glued the binding in, cut the binding. This is for the inlay, this is for the Big D guitars, this will be my new logo going forward. Put some turquoise in there and epoxy. Next I drilled the tuner holes. I'm getting ready to glue the fretboard here, butt the ends, use the 12 degree radius uh, to do my gluing and voila, glue's really nice. From there I go ahead and start sanding the fretboard now that it's all glued and inlaid. Clean out the slats before I actually glue down the frets. With the frets, I trim the edge uh, with some end nippers that I bought, and then I, you know, line them all up, get them all set, and then just pound them in, and then do the edges. The special tool, you know, usually I do about four to five frets at a time. Now this is the top. This is where the fun really starts to get to the carved top. I built the jig to sand this on my drum sander so I can get a nice flat piece of wood. From there. I glued this, I, I screwed this down to the top, clamped it, and routed. Then I went ahead to my drill press and drilled. 
and then you just start carving with hand tools and you just keep carving and carving and carving uh, you, that's the jig setup from uh, Bob and Dotto's book as you uh, carve the back side and it just keeps working the back is a flame piece of maple split it on my bandsaw resaw it and then this piece is a lot harder you've got a drill and then I use the mallet and I started just pounding the wood away from there I created a jig to the f-holes obviously there's a lot of sanding here glued in the binding black binding on the inside left a little bit of the edge so I could sand it down Then I do the bracing with the profile, get the sander to sand it down, glue the bracing in, then you can start nitpicking the top and circling with pencils on where there's still markers and whatnot. This is the backside now, gluing the bracing for the X for the backside. Slot it in, pop it down. Here I'm gluing the, the bracing in, and then I take my plane and plane down the uh, braces, then I built some spool clamps, clamped it down here with some other clamps. Then I built this nice jig off the F-hole jig I made. Essentially, I get uh, get everything level, put a little bracing in them, then run that through my uh, bit to flush the sides. Then I do the binding here, the binding channel, glue in the first channel, tape that up, and then glue in the second channel. So it's four layers of binding, essentially five layers. Then I ran a test run on the neck to see the distance, to make sure the distance set up right. Built the jig, clamped it all down on my bench, and then ran it through with the, uh, the dovetail bed. Made sure it was nice and smooth. Had to do some sanding and some profiling there with the pencil. This is a lot more tricky than you think. This is probably the hardest part of the guitar is getting that to fit flush. That's something that Bob's book doesn't show you how to do very well. Uh, the trick is to get a four degree angle, the same angle. This is the bridge. Bridge is pretty easy to make. And then from there, I go ahead and start finishing it. Put a couple coats. Obviously, there's a ton of sanding, get everything flush. But I put a nice uh, yellow stain on it. And then try to do some feathering to get some a uh, little bit of different color, orange and yellow on the sides and whatnot. From there, I stain the neck as well. And then my finish of choice is true oil and you'll see a couple pictures here now of true oil I'll put about 10 coats on it and do some wet sanding with boiled and sealed in, in between and get everything finished taped off the neck and whatnot made sure everything looked good and then I ended up gluing the neck gluing the neck was simple just two clamps push it down end up profiling the bridge make sure you use that blue tape and then the final step here is that cap I painted black and what you do is you take one more, uh, you get some 400, 600 grit sandpaper, sand off the true oil, make sure everything looks good, and then you uh, put one final coat on. Trick with that final coat is to go really thin. From there, I strung up the guitar, had some of the final pieces, and, and that was it. All in, I had about six months into this project. Uh, did not work on it full time, had other stuff I was working on as well, but uh, you know, post any questions and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Thanks.